Welcome to another video on S2. Today we're looking at mean and variance of a continuous distribution. So what I'll do is I'll just put down the, the formulas that you would be using. And it's quite straightforward. So obviously E of X or mu for the mean. And all we need to do is integrate between our limits and it's just x multiplied by our function and that would be how we find the mean and it's very similar to stuff that we've looked at before and then variance is again it's a similar one something that's probably going to look quite familiar and it's x squared times our function and then not forgetting to subtract our mean squared. Okay, that's obviously quite standard, something you should be quite familiar with now. Now, there is one additional bit to kind of take note of, and that is, I'm going to do this bit in black, but if I had E of a function, say G of X, then what I would get is that g of x multiplied by f of x. And what that really leads on to is if I want to find e of x squared. Because what that then gives me is that x squared times my function. Okay, and that's effectively just this part of the variance so if you remember back to s1 we had the variance of x is equal to e of x squared minus e of x all squared so you can see that this is the same as this yeah this is my e of x squared and obviously this will be my mean squared which is here so it's all along the same lines now if you're thinking of this this gives you an opportunity sometimes to make your life a little bit easier in a question just remembering it um but a couple of other things from s1 pretty sure it was s1 let's have a look so you got e of a x plus b remembering that is now a times e of x plus b and very similar with the variance but if you remember with the variance it will be a squared times the variance of x but the adding or subtracting b doesn't affect the variance so these are just some additional notes just to remember and they are useful as we go through so without further ado, let's get into a couple of examples as I think that's where everything starts to make more sense. So nice easy one to get us started. And finding that mean, that E of X, all we need to do is integrate and we're going to multiply X by our function. So quarter X multiplied by X becomes a quarter X squared. And then our limits are 2 and 1. Okay. Now, integrating, I often do take this quarter outside. Um, but you can leave it inside or outside. I'll leave it inside for this one. So let's integrate that. So quarter x squared. So that's going to become x to the power 3 divided by 3. So my quarter is going to become a 12th. And that's between 2 and 1. And then, of course, just substituting in our 2 and 1 is going to give us 8 over 12 minus 1 over 12, which ends up with 7 over 12. And that is our expected value of x, or our mean. Now, with the variance, of course, we need to multiply by x squared. So my one quarter x becomes one quarter x cubed between two and one 
and once I've integrated that I need to subtract my mean squared which I've already worked out as 7 twelfths. So we'll do the integration first. So add 1 to my power, divide by that power. So it's going to be 1 over 16, x to the power 4. And then I'm going to be minusing 7 over 12 squared. So substituting in uh, 2, it's going to give me 2 to the power 4 is 16. So we've got 16 over 16, which is obviously 1. Minus 1 over 16. That's from my integration part. And then, of course, we're minusing 49 over 144. And that gives me 43 over 72. And I can leave it as a fraction. Now moving on to part C. So we have E of 2x minus 1. So that means 2 times e of x minus 1. So it's 2 times 7 over 12. Take away 1, or we've got 14 over 12 minus 1, which is going to be 2 over 12, or 1 sixth. And then part d, we've got the same thing for variance. So it's going to be 2 squared times the variance of x, but we don't take away the 1. So we got 4 times 43 over 72. And that leaves us 43 over 18. Of course, we could round this off. Often it will ask for an exact value, so we'd leave it as a fraction. If, you, if it didn't ask for an exact value, it might ask for, I don't know, usually three significant figures. So, you know, in that case, then in this kind of case, if I was looking for three significant figures, we would be looking at 2.39 to three significant figures. So it all depends on how the question wants you to leave your answer. If it doesn't say anything, feel free to either leave her as a fraction or leave her as three significant figures. Now, here we have a similar problem, find e of x, but often in this type of one, we'll be given another part, which is like, say, sketch the PDF. I haven't written it down here, but I am going to do it. And the reason it will sometimes say sketch the PDF is that if you notice, this is a quadratic, isn't it? A negative one. And if I look at this quadratic, I can see that this is going to be between minus 1 and 2. And it's obviously symmetrical between those two values. What that means is that if I look at where that peak would be, it should be at 0 0.5. Okay, it's one and a half this way and one and a half this way. So from symmetry, I can say that E of X equals 0 0.5. Now I'm going to do it the standard way using our integration. So we're going to integrate. So I'm going to put the two ninths outside this time. And we're going to have 2x plus x squared minus x cubed when we multiply them all by x. And then it's between 2 and minus 1. So this will give me, again, my two lines outside. So I've got 2x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the power 4 over 4. That will cancel, and then we're substituting in 2 and 1. So 2 over 9, and then we have 8 over 3 minus 5 over 12. And when I work this out, I get a half. Exactly the same answer as here. So that you can see that sometimes you can save yourself a little bit of time. So the second was by symmetry. 
And if you were going to do this from a graph, from a sketch, and you state the value, put by symmetry with it. Okay, so you're letting the examiner know that you know that the graph is symmetrical. Therefore, that middle value here, which will give me my highest point, that middle value is going to be my mean. Hopefully that's made things a little bit easier. But like I said, usually it wouldn't just be find E of X. Usually you'd have a sketch the PDF first. Sketch the probability density function. And you'll be able to see from that that you can take this little shortcut. Now, final example. I wanted to make sure that I did a piecewise function so that you knew what to do when you had your two separate functions. And it is actually very straightforward. So if I want to find my E of X, I expected value, my mean. All I need to do is integrate, but also remembering to multiply by X each term. So this is going to be X cubed over 27 between 3 and 0 plus and then integrate my second one so 1 third will become 1 third x or x over 3 and that's between 5 and 3. So that's all I need to do is I make sure that I keep the same limits as you can see here and then I'm integrating them separately and adding them together. Now you don't need to see me watch these watch me integrate these again. So I'll just pop the values down. So if you do have a go yourself, you can just double check them. The second one was eight over three, and of course adding them together will give me forty one over twelve. And finding the variance will be very much the same. So I'm going to integrate between the same limits, but obviously I'm multiplying by x squared. So this is going to be x to the power of 4 over 27. I'm going to add my second one. And this is going to be x squared over 3. And then I mustn't forget to subtract my mean squared. So in this case, that's the 41 over 12 squared. And that should leave me with a final value of 731 over 720. Or if I was doing it to three significant figures, 1.02 to three significant figures there. So hopefully, you know, obviously I've skipped a few steps there because I don't think you need to see me integrate again. But all you need to remember with a piecewise is integrate each one separately and add them together. With the variance, don't forget to subtract the mean squared. Now I've left six questions for you to have a go at. And as always, I'll go through the answers at the end of the video. If you're new to my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps me out and hopefully means that at least if you're looking for similar videos in the future it should be easy for you to find your way back here anyway i'll let you get on with the questions